Income tax 2023-2024, pensions and annuities tax software example. Get ready and some coffee because we're laying down the facts about income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Form 1040 example problem using LACERT tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the Form 1040 related schedules and instructions at the IRS website irs.gov irs.gov starting with adam tax man just trying to avoid the dang tax man <laughs> living in 90210 beverly hills we've got the single filer to start off with back to 100,000 w2 income standard deduction at the 13850 for the taxable income 86150 mirroring that in our income tax formula in excel 100,000 13,850 taxable income, 86,150. The tax being calculated by LACERT software, 14,266 on page two. There's our 14,266. We're now going to be looking at the 1099R once again, going back to page one last time, noting that we looked at the 1099R with relation to and IRA distributions, now we're looking at the pensions. So we were on line four, now we're going to be on uh, line five. Note that they're very similar in nature in that they're gonna be typically reported here on the form 1099R, which is labeled distributions from pensions, annuity, retirement, or profit sharing plans, IRA insurance contracts, and so forth. The major box is being box one, the gross distribution, Box two, the taxable amount of the distribution. Box seven is important because you could have a code. This checkbox could give you an indication as to whether it's going to be an IRA or, or a pension uh, distribution. And then you could have the withholdings that could be here as well. Remembering that if someone is in their working years, then you would expect the major forms you would receive are like W-2 forms, for example. If they are in retirement years, you would think that the major income forms you might be receiving are the 1099-Rs, which are reflecting money that has been put away for retirement in a, an account that's under the umbrella of some kind of tax entity, meaning you're still usually investing in stocks and bonds, but you put it under the umbrella of, say, an IRA, that's what we talked about before, when you don't have access usually to an employer plan such as a 401k or a 403b because there's more limitations to put money into an IRA and less benefits such as matching. So that those are typically going to be used for added contributions or so that you, because you don't have access to some other form of contribution or if you put money into like a 401k plan or something like that, which is usually more, uh, uh, you might have more benefits to put money in, like putting more money in and having matching. And now we're going to be pulling money out because we got a, we got a deferral of the income uh, related to those plans. And typically they'll be hopefully properly reported on the 1099 and therefore fairly easy to do the data input. So with tax planning, you have two kind of, or with tax preparation or tax issues, you have two things to be thinking about. One, just the data input, which is usually fairly straightforward because the 1099 will guide you. And then two, what do people do in retirement with regards to their withholdings? Meaning now they have to figure out when they pull money out, if it's taxable or not, if they're subject to tax, how are they going to pay the tax? 
Do they want to withhold it from the 1099-R? Or do they want to make estimated tax payments, for example? And when you put money into a retirement plan, again, that takes some tax planning situations as well. Okay, let's start off with the, the normal scenario like we did with the IRAs. Let's imagine that the person is in retirement age. So we're not talking about them putting money into the plan. They're retired and now taking money out of the plan. So let's say they're like 67. So we'll say 2023 minus 67 date of birth. Let's bring it back to 19... Uh, 56 about and so we're going to say all right so then they're in retirement let me go back here and let's say they do not have w-2 income so i'm going to remove the w-2 income and say now they're going to get their income instead from pensions and iras and let's say this is pension one and i'm going to say the distribution code is seven because it's a normal distribution that is would be what you would normally see you would think if it was just a normal distribution which is going to be subject to tax and then we're going to say the taxable amount let's say is seventy-five thousand this time and then it's all taxable this is the gross distribution i should say and the taxable amount of the distribution they might have withholdings on it let's imagine they have withholdings of six thousand dollars of withholdings so that would be box one populated box two the taxable amount same numbers and then the withholding amount is going to be the uh and then the code is seven and then box four was the withholding let's make it a little bit different actually let's make let's say that that seventy thousand was taxable just to make it different so then i'm going to go back to the forms and say all right so now notice it popped me it bounced me off to the 1040 SR, but I'm still gonna view it on the form 1040 so we have the same layout so it'll be easier to see. So now we're gonna say 75,000 was the total amount, but only 70,000 of it is gonna be taxable. Therefore, only 70 of the 75 is included in the taxable income. If I mirror that in my formula, we, I'm gonna go back to the income tab, no W-2 income instead we have the 1099 so i'm going to say pension distribution and i'll say 70,000 of it is taxable the full amount was 75 which i'll put on the side so i can see it i'll sum it up over here just so we can see that for my informational purposes but the 70 is the taxable amount which is going to pull into the first line of my equation they're over the age limit so i'm going to add the standard deduction has an added 1850 so that comes out to 1570 taxable income at 54300 if i go back on over here 54300 and then page two seven thousand uh 265 is the tax so seven uh 265 and then i said that we withheld six thousand so withholdings, then payments, I'm going to say from 1099, 6,000. That's 6,000 then pulling over to my page one. So there's the tax, 6,000 withheld. We have 1,265. If I go back on over, uh, uh, 1,265 plus a $27 penalty, 27 gets us to 1,292. So uh one two actually this was seven this this tax was what was it seven two five nine seven two five nine so one two one two eight six and one two eight six okay so that's the general scenario that we would see in retirement now let's let's imagine that they weren't in uh retirement and they pulled the money out uh early so what would happen then let's go back on over and say okay let's bring it back to saying now we'll say that the age is we'll bring it back to 19 like 77 let's say and then we had the uh pension income and let's say say now it's 75,000 and 75,000 that they pulled out i'm going to remove the federal withholdings but the code this time was uh that it was an early distribution no exception 
So that's a bad code to see typically. So if we saw that in uh, box seven, we're gonna go, oh no, that could cause a problem. Notice also that you wanna be careful to assign it to the proper spouse if they are married, because that could have implications and that this box represents if it's gonna go into the IRA or not. So in other words, if I go back on over here, I could see then if I go to, to the first page, we now have the 75,000. Now we're at the 13,850 because we're back down to the standard deduction. So if I mirror that over here, I'm gonna say now all 75,000 was taxable. And if I go back on over, now they're not over the age limit, standard deduction back down to 13,850. That gets me to 61,150. So we're at 61,150. And then on page two, tax is 8,766, but we also have this other tax, which is substantial, 7,500. That's coming from schedule two, line 21. If I go to schedule two, line 21, I can see it right here. It's the additional tax on IRA or other tax favored accounts. 5329 is the form it's coming from additional tax on qualified plans. And you can see basically it's taking 10% of the distribution because it was taken out before the retirement age. Now you could have a, a situation where there's a rationale or reason for it, meaning early distribution uh, exception applies. If that was the case, possibly, then you take the early distribution and there's an exception for whatever reason. We still have it included in income so that's a common misconception where people say, hey, look, there was an exception. I shouldn't have to pay taxes on it. It's like, well, no, you still have to pay taxes on it. You're just not going to get hit with that massive penalty because you still got the benefit of, of, taking, of taking the money tax free when you put it into the retirement account. So there we see that. And then just to note the difference between uh, these two forms, you can see that this is on line uh, 5A, if I go back on over and check this off and go back, you could see then it pulls it up to uh, 4A. So that's the difference between 4A and 5A in our data input form, which will typically be indicated on the 1099R, which is used for both by this basically box right here for IRA uh, or not. So I'm going to go back on over. I'm going to uncheck that and say, okay, let's uncheck that and that brings us uh, back here so there it is now the other common thing you might have is that one some person goes from one job to another job in which case you might see a code that says like g which is a rollover so now we have a, a rollover and so that would mean that box one would have the amount box two hopefully would be something like zero because none of it is taxable. It's just reporting that you went from one place to another, which might happen when you go to a new job, for example. You're still subject to the same uh, pr same issues with pulling the money out, but you want to put it under a different like uh, managing or financial institution. So now we have 75,000 pension and annuities marking that it's rolled over and therefore none of it is being included for uh, taxes. It's not having an impact on the taxable income. So usually it's fairly straightforward to do the data input, noting again that there's a difference between kind of the data input and then and then the planning for it. And you might have some planning after you do the data input, which would be like something like, how much do you need to withhold next year so you don't get hit with penalties? Is there any way that you could pull money out of the pension plan that's subject to tax and some money out of plans that are not subject to tax. So you result in a lower amount of taxable income, right? And then when people are moving from job to job, you have questions about, well, uh, should, should you roll the money over, typically roll the money over and don't take it out if possible, you might get hit with a penalty. If people really need to take it out because there's an emergency, then you can look into basically possible scenarios in which case it may not be subject to tax in certain situations like a like a declared disaster or something uh, like that and see when it might be pulled out noting that you want to make sure that the financial institution is made aware 
of the issue so that when they report the information on the 1099-R, which will go to the IRS, we have something in box seven that does not indicate, hopefully, that it's going to be subject to penalties, right? We want it to be on the 1099-R so that it will not cause us any problems uh, with the government. And remember that uh, with, with distributions, it'll probably still be subject to income tax, but we, we, we want to get the get rid of the penalties. There's not really a way around the income tax if you didn't have to pay taxes when you put the money in. But we don't want to have a penalty on top of uh, the tax on the distribution uh, is the general idea. If I go back to the first tab, you can also look through some of the codes here for more information that might give you ideas of when of when distributions might not be taxable. You can look into some other tax planning strategies and whatnot uh, with regards to IRAs in terms of trying to maximize uh, the tax benefit of the IRAs. You can also look at the instructions. If there's any issues with this form that you have questions with, you can look at the instructions for the forms and take a look at, uh, at these code numbers, which can help you guide you with the data input, tell you what's happening, help you to explain it, and also guide you for further research that you can go to from there.